Good day everyone, today we are going to have a look at the debtors ledger and the debtors list. All of the information in this video comes out of your New Era Accounting textbook for Grade 9s. So please refer back to your textbook. Right, so introduction. In a previous module we covered selling goods on credit and making the necessary entries in the debtors journal and posting to the general ledger. We also looked at recording receipts from debtors in the cash receipt journal in the settlement of their accounts. In this module, we will focus on the posting to a debtors ledger, which shows the details of the amounts owing by each debtor. So basically, we are going to have a look at the debtors account and we are going to make a detailed summary of the debtors uh, control account. In other words, the debtors control account is the total owed by all of your debtors. We are going to break it down to separate debtors now so we can see what is owed by each debtor. We are going to do this by setting up a debtors ledger. Right, so adapting the bookkeeping system to keep track of individual debtors using a debtors ledger. So whenever we talk about a debtors ledger, we are talking about the individual debtor. So from the task in the previous module, you should have gained a good idea of how a business controls its debtors in total. However, it will be necessary to monitor each individual debtor individually as well. Some debtors might pay on time, others might be slow in paying. This will place a strain on the business because operating expenses need to be covered and liabilities have to be settled. The method used to control the individual debtors is through the use of a debtor's ledger. In many businesses, maintaining this debtor ledger and chasing up the debtors becomes a full-time task. So it is often advisable to employ a person, a debtor's clerk or a credit controller to do this job on a full-time basis. The debtor's ledger reflects the same information that is contained in the debtor's control account, but it is broken down or analyzed for each individual debtor. The important points to remember are if the debtor control account is debited in the main ledger, the general ledger, then the individual debtor must be debited as well. If the debtor's control account is credited in the main ledger, the general ledger then an individual debtor must be credited as well. The entries in the debtor's ledger do not form part of the double entry in the general ledger. They constitute an additional entry in the separate ledger. So in other words, to help you understand better, in your general ledger, if your debtor's control account is being debited or credited, it means there were a change in an individual debtor's account as well. In other words, if debtor D1 purchases more stuff on credit, the total of debtor's control account will increase, but also the individual account of debtor D1. Okay. So if the general um, ledger account, uh, debtors control account changes, then somewhere an individual debtors ledger account must also change. So um, at the end of the month, a list of all of the debtors balances in the debtors ledger is made. The total of this list should agree with the balance of the debtors control account in the general ledger. In other words, the total of all of your separate debtors added together should be exactly the same as the balance in your debtors um, control account in your general ledger. The debtor's control account is used to control all of the entries in the individual debtor's accounts, hence the word control in its name. So in other words, if debtor D1, if we received money from D1 in our cash received journal and if he purchased more stuff in the debtor's journal and if he returned stuff in the debtor's allowances journal, all of this information will come together in one debtor's ledger, the debtor's ledger of D1. And uh, I will show you an example just now. Right, so it is generally accepted practice for an individual debtor's account 
in a data's ledger to be compiled according to a three column ledger approach. It is also a good idea for the address of the data to be recorded in this account at the end of the month. A copy of this account can be mailed to the debtor to confirm the amount that he is required to pay. Work through the following task to obtain an understanding of what a debtor's account will look like. Take note of the three column method that is used. Right, let's have a look. Right, so this is an example of a debtor's ledger. The debtor's clerk of Mary Stores has prepared the following account of one of their debtors. Right, so sorry, before we continue, I forgot to tell you, this is a task 5.1 in your New Era Accounting textbook for grade 9s. So, right, so, we are doing the books of Mary Stores, and this is the debtor's ledger of Mary Stores. Now we are going to have a look at the individual statement. Another word for a debtor's ledger of a separate person will be a statement. So, we are going to have a look at the statement or the debtor's ledger of I Spindle, a debtor in the books of Mary Stores. So, this is a client of Mary Stores. Um, he stays in 30 Musgrave Road in Durban with a code of 4001. Account reference number, date 31st of March 2007. Credit limit of 4000 Rand and then credit, credit terms of 30 days. This means he can't owe us more than 4,000 Rand. If he does, then we need to motivate him or get the money out of him because we are at risk of him not being able to settle his debts according to the amount of money or his income. And then credit terms, 30 days, he can't owe us a certain amount for a period longer than 30 days. Right, so this is now how a debtor's ledger will look. On the 1st of March, the balance brought forward from the previous month was 1,100 Rand. Do you see it's not a debit or credit? It's because it's not a transaction. It's only a reminder of our opening balance because of transactions in the previous month. So 1st of March, I Spindle owes us 1,100 Rand. Then on the 7th of March, we issued an invoice 115 to iSpendle and this is a transaction that was recorded in our debtors journal number 3 for March, 3rd month of the year. So you bought more stuff on credit to the value of 6, 620 Rand. We will take our previous balance of 1,100, we will add the amount of 620 Rand and our new balance will be 1,720 Rand. A quick tip, this is still an asset, remember it's a debtor, so debit means plus, credit means minus. So we will take the balance whenever the amount is in the debit side, we will add it and we will take the balance whenever the amount is in the credit side, we will deduct it. Right, so on the 11th of March, um, I Spindle bought more stuff on credit and we issued him invoice 144 and this transaction was recorded in our debtors journal number 3. The amount that he bought on credit was 2050 Rand and we will take our previous balance of 1720 Rand, we will add or 2050 rands and now we will see he owes us 3770 rand okay so it's getting close to that 4000 rand limit so now we receive some money from i spindle on the 17th of march so we issued him receipt 72 and this transaction would have been recorded in our cash receipt journal number three we receive money from the debtor. He's settling his debt, so he's owing us 1,100 Rand less. So we will take our previous balance, 3,770 Rand. We will deduct 1,100 Rand and we will get the answer of A. The answer of A will be 2,670 Rand. Do you see the balance? Uh, became smaller because he, don't, he doesn't owe us this money anymore. You settled his debts. But then on the 25th, he bought more stuff on credit. So we issued invoice 163 and this would have been recorded in the debtors journal 3. Uh, D is debtors journal 3 and we will add 
to the previous balance 2670 rand we will add this 1340 rand and our new balance b will be 4010 rand you see it's over that credit limit so we should keep an eye over this guy he's over his credit limit he can't purchase more stuff on credit um, before he's not settling any debts okay then on the 26th, we receive some money from him. So we issued receipt 86. And E, the folio, will then be cash receipt journal 3. We are receiving money and it would have been recorded in our cash receipt journal 3. So 700 rand received from him. It will be credited. He owes us 700 rand less. This will decrease our debtor's control account by 700 rand, but also the individual account of I spindle. Right, so our new balance will be 3310 rand. Okay, so now he's in the safe zone again. Let's quickly answer these questions. Why is it important to ha um, have Miss Bendel's address reflected in his account so we know where to send his statement at the end of the month? These days, it's most of the time it's done with email, but still you need the physical address so you know that this guy has a place where he stays and that he's a bit more of a constant. In other words, chances of him settling his debts is better than a person or um, not as risky of giving debt to a person that does not have a fixed address because where are you going to find them if they don't settle their debts? Okay. So explain why the account reference, credit limit and credit terms are shown in this account. It is easier to know, okay, this guy's limit is 4,000 and his credit terms is 30 days. So now you know that when doing or setting up the debtors ledger and when selling more stuff to I spendle on credit. Then you know when, um, like for example, when um, his amount that he owes us in B is 4,010 Rand, then you know, okay, before I sell anything on credit to I spendle, he first needs to settle his debts. And then, as an example, you're on the 17th, we receive 1,100 Rand from I Spindle. He owes us 1,100 Rand on the 1st. So, 17 days later, he settles that debt. So, we are within that 30 days period. So, we are still fine. So, it's easier to have this information and know it while you are working with this client. All right, so identify the missing figures indicated by ABC. Right, so we have already done that. How much did Miss Pendle owe at the beginning of March 2007? At the beginning of March, he owed us 1,100 Rand. How much did Miss Pendle buy on credit during March 2007? We are going to add up all three of this. Remember, Debtors Journal 3, Debtors Journal 3, D was also Debtors Journal 3. It means that this is all credit purchases. So 620 Rand plus 2050 Rand plus 1340 Rand will equal 4010 Rand. Then 5.1.6. How much did Ms. Mr. Spindle pay to Mary Stores during March 2007? We are going to add up 1100 Rand and 700 Rand and we will get an answer of 1800 Rand. Then Mr. Spindle wants to increase a credit limit to 7,000 Rand. Would you recommend that her limit be increased? My personal opinion, no, because she's not settling a debt. She's only doing it a little bit at a time. And therefore, I would be careful and I will not increase a credit limit. And then another argument might be that now that you can see she's settling some of her debts that you might increase um, a credit limit by a little bit since she is trying to settle her debt. You might just run the chance of her owing you too much money and not being able to uh, repay you. So, another opinion or argument, if she got a salary increase, then yes, I will increase the credit limit because now she has a better cash flow and chances are more likely that she will settle her debts. I hope this made sense. Please watch out for memo discussions on this homework that you've done during this week. I will send them shortly.
um, and hopefully that will help you understand a bit better. Please don't hesitate to email me if you have any questions. Have a good day.